Okay. Welcome, Nicola. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Nicola is actually um, in Venice at the moment where he's uh, working and living since a few years now, right? Yeah, more than yeah. seven years now. Yeah, so where that's where he did his uh, PhD and now he's continuing uh, uh, with a postdoc. And I heard uh, he's moving to Canada soon. Yeah, in January. The... What is that? What are you going to do? Uh, I won a Marie Curie uh, Global Fellowship. That's which cool. means uh, I'm going to spend two years uh, in uh, Montreal. And then the third year is going to be back to the host institution, which is uh, my institution where I, where I work uh, currently now. You, you're from Canada now, Maxime. Yeah, I, I'm from Montreal, actually. Okay, wow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Very much of a coincidence. Yeah, we should exchange notes. Of course, but you live there now? No, I moved. Uh, I moved. I'm in, I'm in LA now for the past okay. few years, but I was born and raised in Montreal, so I know the city very well. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. So, just, just to give you like a quick summary, Nick, um, uh, you know, this is like a 10 weeks uh, program overall, mm -hmm. and we're following very loosely the different steps of uh, a design project whatever that means, and we are in this type of module, which we call processing. So uh, we, we somehow managed to gather some data through research. This is the moment when we start to look at the data and understand how we can uh, organize them uh, and uh, share them and, and uh, basically process them. Um, so we started uh, on Monday uh, with Maxim, actually, and also uh, Ricky Torresi that you know. Mm -hmm. And they have been looking into um, different methods of uh, um, uh, photogrammetry, so capturing uh, um, three-dimensional models through photographs. And we, the scope of the of the fellowship um, in general is to gather a new perspective uh, on uh, our immediate surroundings. So to learn new tools uh, that can help us understand and uh, uh, gain a different interpretation on. Uh, what surrounds us, especially uh, this time when it's so hard to look any further away. Uh, yeah, so we thought it would be great to look at some of your work and, uh, uh, you know, again, again, a different perspective on what it means to explore one's surroundings from the specific point of view of the sonic uh, landscape, because that's mm -hmm. what you're an expert on. So, Nicola, uh, apart from and um, of course, an architect and researcher is also an amazing musician. He, he tried to, to teach me guitar for, for one year. Uh, it's true. I was not a player, but he is an amazing musician and is, is working at the uh, constantly is working between uh, music and space. Uh, and I think that this would be a very inspiring uh, point of view. So I think maybe you can just share, you can tell us uh, mm -hmm. very casually what you do uh, and then we can maybe open a discussion about that of course okay so thanks uh, again for inviting me uh, i will quickly introduce my practice uh, as a researcher and as a sound artist uh, i can uh, i will uh, show you some uh, some works maybe to explain better what i what i do uh, and then i will ask you um, how how my practice can uh, inform your uh, your activity right now uh, so we can uh, actually move from uh, change of uh, point of view to change of point of listening, maybe, just to also change the vocabulary we, we use to, you know, to refer to the real world we we engage with every day, and um, and yeah, and then I, I will be curious also to to listen to to what you're doing now and also how how can uh, my short introduction can uh, uh, somehow. Yeah, somehow give, give you some new insights. Uh, so basically, I, I, I studied uh, as an architect uh, and I was also uh, studying as musician for, for many years. Uh, so uh, uh, finally, uh, with my PhD, we, which I closed uh, five years ago, more or less, 
uh, I combined together the the big the, the field of urban planning uh, and the one of a uh, of a uh, um, of music and especially I was more and more fascinated by the concept of uh, uh, field recording and by the, the way how we can uh, explore uh, the um, the urban environment but also the rural environment so I mean the environment in general uh, by uh, raising our uh, sonic awareness so what I was doing was uh, trying to uh, use these um, methodologies uh, in uh, especially in uh, in the field of urban planning where these methodologies were not really um, enough uh, considered let's say that uh, so first of all my uh, my perspective is a methodological perspective because i try to 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 use uh, as much as possible my my body but also of course my my listening practice uh, and uh, i i try to to develop by doing that i try to develop uh, uh, a new a new methodology so a new perspective on uh, on uh, some issues for example urban issues that are uh, uh, often uh, studied by planners uh, in, a, in a in a different way uh, so just to give you some examples i'm uh, uh, really fascinated by and in, interested into uh, some uh, urban issues which could be uh, how a city uh, is um, affected by the population, for example, or social ex ex exclusion, for example, uh, uh, and how these uh, topics could be could be uh, um, explored uh, through listening. So, by listening to the to 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 the, uh, for example, the. Uh, the practices, the everyday practices, which are com composing the the atmosphere of a place, gives uh, a lot of information. Give a lot of information on uh, how um, how the, for example, the, um, uh, the 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 public space is structured. How people use public space. Uh, what are the 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 most common uh, practices. Uh, how people uh, how people engage with uh, with with each other, and also how uh, some uh, of uh, people's uh, practices, everyday practices, are, uh, for example, uh, uh, silenced. So uh, also the the right to or the the voice of uh, a specific uh, uh, urban actor. Uh, it's really interesting to me because uh, gives me some uh, really uh, important. Uh, definitions uh, of uh, how a public space is open to diversity is open to uh, co coexisting uh, uh, coexisting uh, um, yeah uh, everyday practices and uh, and activities so uh, as i said i i'm working uh, on the um, on the link between urban planning and sound studies uh, uh, I, I discovered by by researching on this topic that, that there was a huge interest in the field of research about uh, how uh, how, is, uh, how sound uh, is uh, employed by by many different uh, uh, fields of study, let's say uh, urban sociology, anthropology, uh, but also musicology, of course. So it's not about just music; it's more about uh, uh, how a sound changes over time, and how can I uh, how can I uh, read it uh, from an urban perspective? Uh, and uh, uh, and yeah, that's it basically. Uh, so I, I I told you uh, I told you already that uh, I'm I'm interested in uh, um, in looking for um, let's say socially vulnerable situations that are uh, affective uh, urban uh, urban. Uh, uh, cities, uh, urban contexts, uh, urban areas, they, they could be, for example, suburbs, uh, which are socially excluding uh, uh, parts of the population, or they could be also, uh, let's say, also uh, areas that uh, you, 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 you would never say that they are uh, marginal, let's, for example, the, the center of a city, which could also be affected by a decrease uh, of a tra of um, uh, commercial uh, areas or uh, depopulated uh, or uh, affected by other um, other uh, urban transformations. So that's uh, 
uh, that's the field I'm uh, moving uh, in, uh, and uh, and I'm trying to do to do this, uh, uh, of course, by 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 doing uh, research through field recordings. So I'm actually recording sounds within the the, the city. I'm uh, using different. Uh, sorts of uh, microphones also to engage with uh, the urban atmosphere, the sonic atmosphere. Uh, and I, I then try to, of course, to, uh, to analyze these, uh, these, uh, these recordings because they give, uh, they give me uh, a lot of uh, information about the, the site I'm, uh, I'm studying. Uh, apart from uh, the, the methodological uh, part, uh, so the, the field recording, uh, the use of field recordings into research, uh, I also do. Uh, I also do. I'm also uh, interested into the contribution of uh, sound art in in this uh, in this field of study. So I, I, I also um, uh, work as a sound artist in many many occasions in many uh, many situations, uh, especially uh, within uh, uh, urban regeneration uh, processes where. Uh, uh, the contribution of uh, of public art and the participatory uh, code uh, design, uh, collaborative uh, design, are important uh, important elements into a big uh, picture, a big frame uh, framework of uh, urban regeneration. So I, yeah, I work with uh, with uh, with sound art as well, and I'm interested uh, in into bringing and rising sonic awareness into many different uh, contexts uh, which are not really uh, sometimes they are not really uh, uh, aware of of the of how uh, you know how contemporary art could uh, could uh, uh, implement or could uh, could give give them uh, new perspectives uh, and that's that's really interesting because i i try to use uh, sound art but also participatory uh, practices uh, combining together my interest into sound with the um, with the 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 necessity the the necessity to to involve uh, as much as as much as possible the the communities uh, uh, I'm uh, I'm dealing with. So that's uh, the the that's a short introduction. Maybe I can uh, show you my my website so I, we can uh, discuss together about some some works uh, in particular. Uh, how to do can that, John? Can you share your screen? Do it now. Present now, and then another no, no. pop up in the middle at the top, and you just choose which screen to share. Yep. Here we are. Sorry, I, I never, I never used this um, Google Meet. So can you see now my my screen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. You see your browser. Okay, so here's me with my my big microphone exploring. Uh, this is a just a uh, just a, an evocative uh, picture, which tries to to visualize what an atmosphere is, but uh, of course uh, it's just uh, you know uh, it's just a visual uh, representation of my interest in uh, atmosphere and uh, ambiance. Uh, so. Uh, Let's go to the sound art section where there's some of the works I'm I, I'm doing over over the past few years. Uh, yeah, this for example is uh, this could be an example uh, of uh, a project I did uh, just last fall in Palermo. In uh, as you can see, this is a a really a really difficult uh, environment, really segregated neighborhood. Uh, and this is a bocce court, a bowling uh, alley, uh, which is the center of a big park uh, surrounded by illegally occupied buildings. So the, the situation here was not really easy, as you can as you can imagine. Uh, and uh, I was involved in uh, in a in a big in a bigger project uh, where I developed uh, this uh, participatory sound art uh, uh, project. Uh, so basically, I was uh, uh, conducting workshops with uh, different groups of uh, of people, uh, especially with the uh, youngers uh, uh, of different ages, uh, and I was uh, doing with them what we call uh, sound walks. So we were basically 
uh, exploring the neighborhood, exploring the, the area, uh, trying to, to be conducted by, by sound instead of uh, sight. And uh, so we, we discovered, uh, we tried to discover uh, the, the main characteristic of this, uh, of this area. Uh, just by listening to the to the emerging qualities of this uh, of this uh, neighborhood, uh, of course we noticed uh, so many uh, peculiar and uh, intriguing uh, uh, things and situations, uh, and we discussed a lot with uh, these uh, uh, groups of youngers, but also also groups of uh, women uh, and groups of uh, elders, of course, uh, and. Uh, the perspective that emerged from from this uh, work was uh, was pretty interesting to me uh, because uh, just to, to give you an example this is a really uh, a really socially vulnerable uh, situation and and uh, and context uh, and we could uh, we could we, we could uh, analyze how the the voices and uh, also the the presence of uh, women uh, was completely uh, silenced by the men's um, use of public space. Uh, so uh, women here are uh, are, are always uh, uh, worried to, to go out even for uh, shopping because they are continu continuously um, continuously um, uh, let, let's say uh, they don't live in a really safe environment and they feel constantly uh, constantly in, in danger so uh, so their contribution into uh, the, the the sonic atmosphere of this area uh, is uh, is more or less nothing uh, and you can feel by walking into these streets that the voices of women were is absent completely absent uh, for example or the you can also feel that the the the, the traders the the sellers the the moving uh, who are moving with their trucks over the over the neighborhood? Uh, they are always referring to just to women, uh, and this is a really um, this is something which is uh, common in in, uh, in Italy for sure, but especially in the south of Italy, uh, we can say that. Let's say that. Uh, and so we we uh, try to to give an interpretation of uh, our sonic uh, uh, investigation here, also uh, through a, a feminine. Uh, point of view and, and perspective uh, about the, the the sonic situation, the, the, the sonic environment here, uh, and of course uh, I was uh, interested into uh, using all these uh, these informations uh, and uh, informing uh, with these informations a uh, participatory performance, which took place exactly here in the in the middle of this uh, of, of this. Uh, uh, this court, this field. Uh, so we actually played uh, 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 like bocce, uh, like the, the the play of uh, yeah the game of bocce. Uh, but but we were activating by playing that we were activating uh, all the archive of field recordings uh, collected during the the workshop during this uh, this period of research. So we basically, together with the help of uh, many many youngers of the of the neighborhood, we were we were actually uh, drawing down on the field uh, some di some different sections regarding the different uh, the different uh, um, our, um, the different sounds of the archive. Uh, maybe I can find a better picture to show you this. Let me give me just a second. Okay, so here you can see the um, the occupied buildings and uh, the desolated uh, green field uh, and park over there. Uh, what I want to show you is uh, no. This is the collective, uh, the collaborative uh, design. Uh, with the uh, with youngsters and kids uh, of the of the area, and this is uh, one of the this uh, how we how we, how we uh, divided the field into different sections. 
uh, reporting in each uh, section a specific uh, field recording recorded recorded during the the survey. Uh, so what we were doing in the end was uh, playing balls, uh, and I was activating the sounds uh, related to these uh, to these sections, uh, creating. Um, uh, part, um, particip uh, participatory in a participatory way with them uh, a, a common uh, a common uh, a common uh, soundtrack uh, so the the field was uh, resonating through the sounds uh, activated by the bolts uh, itself and this was a way to uh, to collaboratively uh, compone uh, compose the the sonic environment of, of the area also giving uh, responsibility to each uh, participant uh, who was uh, entitled uh, somehow to, to give his voice into the into the um, into the design, the, the sonic design of the of the area. Of course, this is uh, uh, how to uh, how to create a, a new a new imaginary, a new vision uh, of a, of a, a, of an area which is uh, um, suffering from uh, social. Uh, uh, difficult social conditions uh, and uh, poverty and criminality and 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 so on. And uh, in in this way, in this regard, we can we can say that uh, uh, imagining a new vision uh, through sound uh, was uh, maybe the also the quickest way we could uh, have to imagine a new a new environment, a new atmosphere. Uh, so here you can see the also the the link between. Uh, how to work with the sound in a in a in a context uh, of urban transformation? Uh, how to work with the participation with sound art, and how to work also in the bigger picture of the urban regeneration? So this was a, this was an example uh, to show you, but I I can maybe uh, give you some other. Um, some other examples let's uh, let's see let's see one moment uh, yeah sure can i can i interrupt you because I mean, I just have a, I have, a, I think there's like a, by this first project you showed us, I think it opens like very interesting uh, questions. Uh, and I'm thinking in particular uh, of our friends in the US now, uh, many of them connected at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering, like, like, Um, the management this kind of, you know, the kind of silence, some voices of the artists. I was wondering if, if any of you guys, especially in the US, have noticed. Uh, of course, you, you did, I can imagine, but like how maybe you have perceived the change in the sonic environment in your, in your cities in the US, if any. I can imagine, I don't know, I, I imagine, for instance, Danny. I'm not sure if Danny has noticed anything because it is. Ti sento male, Gian. But uh, that's also that's also interesting, no? How different. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, Gian. Uh, it's my my connection again. No, I was just asking. Yeah, I was I was just asking. Uh, I was just asking uh, all the participants yeah. connected from the US uh, how they perceive changes changes in the sonic environment. If any. Do we have I a chat know. here? On this topic, I have uh, um, I've read just today an amazing, uh, a really interesting article. Uh, I'll... Um, no. Yeah. I don't know if it, no, no, this is not the right one because I need to repost it, sorry. So forget the first uh, link and go <laughs> someone to- says there's a lot more, Someone says there's a lot more construction work 
in the US these days. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i really i really strongly invite you to to read uh, through this uh, this text uh, it's um it's um, a way to to investigate the the, the changes into sonic sonic environments uh in the in the in the, in the present times especially um especially the author was referring to the well, the, the first period of um, the first period of uh, um, of spread of the virus, the, of the, the virus. So the cities were completely empty. Uh, then uh, uh, there were he, he was um, um, he was um, reflecting on how the the sonic environment was changing due to the the first, the first protests against the the strict uh, rules um, of the government from uh, preventing to the to the virus, so especially right wing uh, oriented, and then how the situation completely uh, changed with the 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 last uh, the last protest and and pro protest against uh, uh, as you know of course the. The, the Black Lives Matter um, topic, of course. So it's it's really nice, really nice way of considering how uh, our uh, sonic environment changes, uh, especially in this period where, where we can uh, uh, we, we can actually we can actually uh, we have a lot to say, uh, and we live in a really uh, really different time com compared to <laughs> to the the normal life. So so we can really have. Um, uh, yeah, we can really have um, some uh, some good uh, some good insights from from this uh, from this uh, uh, from these uh, new perspectives of uh, of reading urban uh, transformations. Yeah, it, it's interesting that it's not the first time that I hear people complaining about construction work, which seems to be particularly intense. Uh, during the pandemic, so it, it seems that all uh, landlords are, you know, taking advantage of this moment to to do renovations. Mm. And uh, I, I read similar posts uh, spanning from uh, Hong Kong uh, to the U.S. to Europe. Uh, helicopters, uh, Dan is mentioning. Uh, I heard mm. a lot of ambulances, ambulances and police sirens in Berlin. And uh, I usually I was wondering. I was asking myself whether it was uh, uh, that they are actually more frequent, or is it just that because every other sound is kind of snows down, uh, then I only notice those sounds, mm. and I haven't I haven't come up with an answer to that. Yeah. Okay, maybe I mean there's like <laughs> no, there, there's not a uh, precise answer maybe to this question. Uh, maybe no, I, I think that the the um, I mean we are we are, we were used to a really complex environment, and when I say complex, I mean uh, an environment made by so many different layers, uh, compo composing uh, what we call uh, noise or whatever. But still, it's a really layered uh, situation, and of mm. course. Uh, in the in the past few months, this uh, layering was uh, was not um, made of the of, of the same uh, components. Let's say that. So the, the general the, the general atmosphere was uh, has completely different uh, characters. That's that's the point I think. Uh, of course, the, the there was uh, plenty of of things going on. Uh, some of them were not going on. Uh, so of, uh, of course, the traffic was uh, less. Uh, was impacted uh, uh, less than before the, the cities, but we could uh, hear more and more ambulances. Uh, so yeah, it's more about the, the combination of the of the elements of the of the elements uh, that are uh, of course manifesting uh, uh, different uses of the of the space, and that that's the that's the the thing in my in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, that's super interesting.
should we look at another project maybe or maybe or maybe you can uh, yeah tell me something about your project uh, uh, as you as you want and maybe you can react to that maybe so what's uh, one thing i didn't mention is that uh, the, in the second part of the workshop um, everyone is trying to um, manipulate the initial uh, 3d scan mm -hmm. through through sounds that were also recorded in the same uh, space so, okay. and this is done this is done as a visual manipulation so mm -hmm. sound becomes a sort of a noise that uh, uh, stretches and and uh, uh, blurs the, the image let's say uh, and this is just from a technical perspective but i think in general uh, if you want to discuss about this uh, translation um, between uh, sound and image mm -hmm. and uh, yeah maybe if you if you have examples that can relate to this topic i think it would be interesting for everyone to sound and uh image yeah uh let's let's say okay maybe maybe i can show you something uh, which has nothing to do to the methodology previous which i previously showed yeah. you but it's more about uh, how do how i deal with uh, yeah with my practice in uh, in general so let's see i'm a bit lost in this uh it's always the bottom right share now. But I have a person then... and chat. If you just click on your main screen and you go to the bottom right, it's present now. OK, now I got it. Yeah. Can you see that? It's coming, yeah. Okay, so I can maybe show you uh, this um, this installation I was working on last year. Uh, it's called the Fermento, and uh, so as you can see, we are in a in a wine yard. Uh, there was uh, this big uh, um, big wine yard, uh, uh, of course, uh, working in the in the mainland of Venice where the Prosecco is, is coming. So it's a really important uh, region for the local economy. Uh, and I was uh, asked to, to create a, an installation uh, inside the winery, the wine yard. Uh, so I, I, was, um, I was working with the, the, the concept of fermentation and I was, uh, I was um, recording with the a, sp a special uh, sort of microphone which you can use uh, inside uh, a, a liquid uh, so it's called the hydrophone uh, you can actually put it inside uh, the water or uh, whatever uh, and i was using this uh, special microphone to uh, to record the sound of a uh, wine fermenting into the big tanks so the these tanks you can see are really big are like uh, 15 meters high and three meters uh, long, so they are really huge. Uh, and I, I was uh, on top of them. I was uh, using uh, using my microphone, uh, my microphone to to record uh, the the sound of the of the fermentation. Maybe maybe I have some some. Uh, let me see. I can find it. Okay. Sorry, I'll give you, just give me a moment. Okay. So that's me recording uh, into the, uh, the wine yard. And the, spe the special microphone I was talking about 
uh, is, uh, no, this is a contact microphone actually. Uh, so I was um, recording all the vibrations of the tank. Um, here you can see it. And the hydrophone comes now. So here is a, there's a cable and uh, attached to the cable, there's this microphone you can put inside the liquid. Yeah, just to, to, to give you know, a uh, short idea also of the space I was working in. Yeah, so basically, uh, basically I, I collected many, uh, many recordings out of, uh, of, this, uh, of this work. And then I was uh, using them and comp composing uh, a sort of, uh, yeah, a sort of uh, uh, composition made just out of field recordings. Uh, and then I was working uh, together with uh, a guy who helped me to create, uh, uh, to create a, a visualization of this uh, composition. So actually we worked together to, uh, to create, um, uh, to create a, a visual uh, representation of these moving, uh, uh, moving sounds um, uh, of this, uh, yeah, coming from this uh, field, uh, this field recording composition. And what we did uh, in the end was uh, to project uh, on on the tanks, the on the tanks the 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 result of the work. So uh, the idea was also to uh, kind of uh, make visible and represent uh, the. Um, the idea of, of uh, fermentation on the, sa on the same surf uh, surface, which is hosting the, the fermentation itself. That was the, the idea. This is a short video just to, to give you. Okay, I'm sorry about the, the audio quality was was not that good. But uh, yeah, that, that 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 was another example, maybe. I don't know, John, if it makes sense to your yeah, work. Yeah, totally, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not completely related to my participatory practice, my works uh, in urban planning and stuff like that is more about uh, uh, another way of uh, working with the within sound art in general. Yeah, no, I think that's very, very relevant, very interesting. Yeah, I wonder if, uh, like, while taking the videos uh, for the photogrammetry, any of you guys have had any thoughts about the sound? I'm asking the, I'm asking the audience here. Yeah, let's let's g give me some, uh, yeah, some feedbacks, guys, please. Um, I I think for me, like. Uh... I, I recorded, so the photogrammetry, I took a 3D scan of like a traffic cone also. And like, I live in Bangkok. So um, as you may know, there's a lot of traffic. And so when I also recorded the sound, uh, I think the object kind of also reflect how Bangkok is like a um, car oriented city because we had a lot of these traffic cones all around. Mm. And I think that is also reflected in the sound. And yeah, in, in the sound that I recorded, all of the people, voices, the merchants, and like all the cars were all overlaid into like it. Yeah, it is very chaotic. Chaotic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly the the way we are, we can uh, think through sound. So it's like the sonic way of thinking, which I am trying to trying to yeah, uh, or invite you just to consider as a as another option, another possibility.
who wants to to give me some some other details about his own project maybe no projects no details yeah it takes time it takes time okay. there's always some awkward, awkward silences when doing this oh, it's nice no problem these big meetings is uh, yeah it's hard to understand who's going to speak up without uh, visual clues I see. I think I think Dan is about to say something. I'm just trying to be quiet so other people can speak. I just saw your face. No, there was there was there were interesting uh, comments on the chat um, about uh, wildlife returning to the cities, mm. and. Uh, and that's like totally true also for me that's like you know like i've never been so aware of the sound of birds mm. um, i know nothing about birds but like you know i could uh for instance just i could hear my my grandpa uh, uh, being able to to tell which bird was making which sound and things like that which is a knowledge we have completely lost mm -hmm. um i think i've been reading something about some evolutionary studies that also um, uh, talk about how how we've been uh, uh, completely deafened by the abundancy of information, so we we are not uh, aware of sounds anymore because there's just too many sounds in cities. And I think that's also something interesting to I don't know I I'm just. Uh, Talking out loud, but uh, uh, speaking out loud, um, thinking out loud. But um, I'm thinking also of how this maybe has an influence on the way we speak, uh, because there's such noise around us, and then we we change our language accordingly, and not not only our volume but also our language. No, sometimes um, mm -hmm. I wonder if this is also. Uh, if uh, the times of pandemic are going to change that, for instance, if there's going to be more consideration for silence or for clarity in communication and things like that. Just a few, just a few thoughts that uh, I had around my mind. But yeah, uh, what about what about South Africa? Is the South African crowd still connected? No, I think they had to go. Um, I, I find it interesting how sometimes I hear people say that in order to sleep, they need kind of a, a noise machine or white noise machine. Mm -hmm. um, just playing, just playing either sounds of nature. But I found some very bizarre ones where playing like city noises, so just like low rumbling of cars in the background or, or people or, you know, like urban sounds, which you think would want to be blocked out at night, but actually um, people, like if they go on vacation or something to a place where there isn't any of that noise, they almost want to bring it back as a form of comfort. And I find something really fascinating about that. Like the, the need for that background noise to be there is like this um, almost state of calm. Yeah, sure, definitely. There's uh, many, Many um, articles and books we, who are, um, which are, um, um, yeah, deepening this um, this topic, uh, and also how the, the also the way how people uh, perceive uh, uh, per perceive their um, yeah their um, everyday environment. For example, uh, people who uh, come back home and uh, switch on the TV in order to just not to feel. Uh, uh, to feel alone that's the, the same you know the same feeling uh, um, of uh, yeah of uh, uh, needing some uh, some extra sounds uh, in order to 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 yeah to sleep or to to yeah to rest i was also uh, reading through the the, the comments here the the chat 
Uh, and yeah, we, we were also a lot talking about the the, the world uh, outside, but uh, not about uh, not that much about our homes. Uh, and also this uh, this I think this this is interesting uh, when I uh, when I read about the the sound of rain of, uh, of the window. I don't know if uh, maybe uh, yeah, this is a, also a really nice uh, suggestion about uh, how do we change. Uh, perception uh, about uh, how we yeah we engage with our everyday uh, indoor environment yes can, I, I have, uh... can, can I ask a question please? of course uh, yeah I, I'm also interested in like urban studies and I wonder like have you recorded like uh, the urban environment and like um, have you ever like dissected in two layers and like does that tell you anything about like the urban environment yeah, I, just... I don't know if i got your um your um um i mean like uh i'm i'm interested to hear about like how it reflects like the urban environment uh because like for example when i recorded my urban environment i found many layers um overlapping each other mm -hmm. so i was interested in like yeah what you said about uh how how in public spaces when you hear more um men voices and then that that means something to that neighborhood mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I, of course when you do a recording uh, it's it's impossible to uh it's impossible to 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 select it in in the different layers i mean it's not like photoshop you can uh, select the different layers of a picture uh, so actually, it's more about uh, the the way how you you learn how to listen, which makes the difference. So I think that the process is is not on the recording itself, is behind uh, on the on your uh, capability of uh, of being a a good listener. So that's that's uh, what I am trying to also to 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 tell you uh, is uh, is about the way how we we change the. The way how we perceive the, the everyday environment, which which should uh, change in order to be more sensitive on uh, you know on uh, the, the 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 characteristics, the peculiarities, the you know the the layers, as you said before. Thank you. Um, I have a, I have a question uh, which is kind of uh, very uh, specific. So we are working on a on a project uh, also together with some of the fellows who are connected, which is about uh, climate anxiety. Um, there's a there's a new um, uh, clinical uh, um, clinically uh, kind of uh, um, officially. A recognized uh, disease which is called solastasia uh, and it's about the feeling of loss of an environment but in, in this specific case uh, the feeling of, of a threat for the, for the future of, of the climate of our planet and one of the goals of the project is to create a, a soothing environment which could uh, encourage um, uh, calm but also kind of like a, a sharing of, of one fear so we have this image of the kind of therapist office, like sort of an environment which is uh, calming and it's kind of inviting you to open up. So my, I was thinking of the, the comment before of how some of the environmental sounds are used for uh, um, helping with sleep, for instance, or how the sound of rain, uh, it's also for me like an incredibly peaceful uh, um, moment when I'm in, in, in this room actually when I'm under the roof. So I wonder if you know of any particular uh, literature of uh, uh, or researchers or artists who work uh, with sound to directly affect feelings and mm. if this is possible. That's, uh, yeah, that's open up a really, really big, uh, deep and uh, long uh, conversation and discussion but uh, uh i don't know uh, of course there in um, if we talk about sound there's a, a big field uh, of study uh, dealing with the uh, human perception so dealing with uh, on the one side the the perception itself 
on the other side uh, the affect the affective uh, capa capa capability of sound so there's a, a big stream uh, of um, of fear, uh, of a study who is uh, which is called uh, actually affect theory uh, and also there's uh, so we have perception uh, we have uh, affectivity and we also have uh, uh, what we call uh, normally emotion you know uh, some somehow the, these things these terms i i used are uh, all merged together uh, but uh, some other, uh, somehow we can um, we can specify uh, how different they they behave because for example you can uh, you can have a feeling uh, which is based on uh, on a sonic uh, which is based on sound on a sonic uh, input uh, but this feeling is not yet translated into emotion uh, and this uh, is uh, called uh, some uh, uh, to be to be really quick uh, and maybe too simple in a, in a too simple way. This is called uh, affect. So you can say, uh, for example, a specific uh, uh, environment, uh, a specific atmosphere, a specific sound is affecting me, even though th this affect affectivity is not yet translated into into emotion. So th this is to say that the, the 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 studies on perception are super are, are pretty vast and uh, uh, yeah it's uh, there's a, there should be a lot to say uh, but on the other side I think that many uh, interesting uh, uh, not only artists but also researchers or people working in between uh, are also experimenting. Uh, as I said before, uh, a way of uh, thinking sonically, which which I think is a uh, is a really nice contribution to the contemporary uh, contemporary research and contemporary art. Uh, so, for example, uh, uh, one of the people uh, who are working in this way is called uh, Brandon Labelle. Uh, maybe I'll give you this. Uh, I'll, sh I'll uh, search you for the, the book I'm talking about. Okay, here it is. I'll um, copy and paste it on the on the chat box. Yeah, thanks. Sonic Agency. Sonic Agency. So. As you can uh, read uh, on the subtitle, sound and the emergent forms of resistance. So we are not just talking about uh, sound uh, as a as a perceptive uh, as, as a perceptual uh, uh, object, it, it, but more about uh, uh, how how uh, sound can uh, can uh, can be a can have a agent can be uh, can um, how to say. Uh, can uh, can be active, can uh, uh, play an active role into, uh, for example, forms of uh, of resistance. So forms of uh, um, of um, uh, collective reflections about uh, different states of uh, of uh, segregation, let's say, or uh, forms of uh, um, um, I. Sorry, uh, or for example, political, uh, political, uh, political actions, uh, and uh, and so on. Um, so this to say that uh, thinking sonically could be uh, could be really um, could be really uh, shifting the way we we perceive, but also we act, uh, and that's the that's the point uh, about uh, this sonic agency. Uh, uh, so the um, uh, I, I really like uh, Brandon Labelle's uh, uh, book. Uh, this is one also, the previous ones, I, I suggest you to have, to have a look uh, around. Um, also because the, he's, um, he's really uh, keen to consider uh, the, uh, how we can uh, uh, sonically uh, reimagine and reconsider uh, um, the, the the understanding of coexistence so how can we live together uh, 
but how can also we accept, for example, different voices into our uh, everyday environment? Uh, so it's more about a shift into our uh, uh, way of uh, uh, perceiving uh, uh, a, a, a different, a different uh, uh, actor, a different uh, uh, group of people, a different organization, a different, uh, uh, you know, uh, a different element in the in the sonic environment, which which is uh, awkward some, somehow, which is uh, uh, even um, uh, even disturbing. But uh, we have to work on this uh, uh, this um, the, on the way how something is disturbing me, uh, and this is how uh, thinking sonically could uh, you know could change uh, the the perception uh, and could could change also the way. I, I perceive uh, myself as a as a, a common liver. I mean, as a uh, living together with other with other people in uh, in the public space, for example. I don't know if it makes sense. They are also pretty tricky concepts, and uh, I don't know if I explain them that well. But this uh, is just to give you some uh, you know some uh, some mm. new ideas to 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 to, to think about. Yeah, no, I think I think it's super interesting. Um, I mean, if uh, just to dump it down, I was uh, I was thinking about all the you mentioned the word conflict, and mm -hmm. I think that's very interesting because uh, I just I was just reminded of how often sound is the reason for uh, conflict uh, with our neighbors, uh, whatever yeah. neighbor means that you know, like with the people who are next to us, were supposed to be our community, but how often the bar downstairs is too loud and then the entire uh, building starts to complain or how often the neighbor next door is watching a movie for late at night or how often um, is uh, uh, even, you know, like on the other hand, how, how this could uh, affect positively social relation, like how children playing uh, automatically make uh, an urban space feel safer, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, or the presence of, of um, um, wildlife sounds make it more more relaxing and so on. So I think that uh, it's super interesting uh, to start to imagine how we could not only, as you say, understand this, perceive this, but also actively use it as one of the tools uh, um, when we when we design or we when we conceive space and social interaction. So I think that's mm -hmm. super interesting. Um, yeah. So I, I think we have a, I think we have a lot to. I think it was very inspirational, and uh, I would just ask if there's any any question. Um, otherwise, we could wrap it up. Uh, any question, from you guys? But uh, okay. Uh, hi, actually, thank you. I, uh, actually yeah, I had to. Uh, I had an experience. I wanted to share. So uh, my Please. webcam is in. I don't know why. Uh, it's just showing an orange screen right now. So basically, uh, the, so when I was doing the experimenting, uh, so the recording thing. Uh, basically, I I try to record and uh, record my sound at three different times. So in the morning, when I recorded my uh, uh, the sound, there was sound of birds and everything. In the afternoon, uh, they, it had a they, the recording had a very construction uh, like near nearby there's a construction happening, so they had a so they had construction sound in it. And like in the in the late evening or at the night, so it had it had sirens uh, that they used to that they are playing now these days, which uh, tend to tell people or uh, that they should be closing their shops and everything and going inside. So. So the thing that I not noticed was like uh, as the days as the day goes by, so this the call the sound outs in the surroundings changes as the time uh, uh, like passes passes on. Also, also when you were like you were talking about the emotions uh, about for the sound thing, uh, like the people living near near the shows, they they have they have a, a siren thing that plays when the, when there are high tides. So I think a, per, a person who is listening to that kind of a sound all uh, like all his life or maybe a larger part of his life 
definitely when he hears that sound in maybe in, in his future or somewhere so that kind of remind that creates a certain kind of a feeling inside him and maybe a kind of reminds of the situation that he was facing at that point of a time when there were high tides and they, they they used to run back inside these kind of things it's really interesting right because it, it starts to talk about like sonic memories in a way um mm -hmm. Which I, I actually feel like, yeah, you have certain memories with smells or, or, or um, I don't know, like uh, other, other kind of um, senses can invoke things, but I never think about that in terms of sound. Does the sound remind me of a, a memory? Um, pretty interesting. Yeah, so, so there, here's, here's a thing that happens. So there, uh, in, the, in the flea markets, there's a recording that they play every time. Uh, basically, <clears throat> They announce about the things that like uh, be aware from uh, be a, be aware just be aware from the uh, pocket pickers and from theft and all. So when I was so when I was very small, the sound is very loud. So it, it kind of like scared me at a, at a certain level. So and and till now uh, when I go to a place like that and uh, I hear that sound, is somehow uh, I, I'm not uh, obviously I know what it's for, but at that time when I was small, it, I I didn't know that. So it certainly did uh, basically generated us kind of feeling till now. Uh, but I, I think, yeah, so sound has a very, uh, has a very, like, I think it's very powerful in certain ways that it, that it can uh, maybe evoke some of the senses or maybe some of the memories. I, I, I think uh, you're also bringing up something super interesting. Um, which is how sound is one of the codes uh, for urban communication. So that it can be used as an alarm, it can be used to warn you about the situation, it can be used to set a schedule, uh, the bell, something starts, something is over. It can be used for alerting you like a siren. So it, it's very interesting because it's um, something which is not written down, but uh, almost uh, instinctively all of us by living in civilization understand uh, uh, the meaning of it so is this kind of very universal code uh, which I, I think is super fascinating yeah yeah definitely yes okay thank you nico thank you again thanks a lot for listening yeah thank you so much um yeah we, we share the the links on the uh, we have a, we have a chat on another completely different uh, platform which i will not even mention to you because <laughs> it's uh, too many I know, things I know, I know you're not into this like super techy things um but no it was great thank you so much i think it was very inspirational uh, and definitely something we're not uh, considering enough as you mentioned at the beginning so I think it's it's a good um, yeah suggestion for all of us to be more aware of this layer of our environment. Mm -hmm. And Thank I think it would be great. Also, it would be great also to see maybe in some of the videos that are coming up to, over the next days, um, mm. the, the animated uh, uh, scans. It would be great to see also some of the some thoughts about what sound is uh, is going along with the. Mm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I was uh, wondering uh, how could uh, how this could uh, somehow inspire your uh, your future projects. Uh, also, starting from the the one you are developing right now. So I I hope it could uh, could be helpful in a way. Yeah, for sure, for sure. We'll we'll, we'll send you the results. We show you. Okay, I'm curious. Well, I, I quickly say to everyone, I I I bought this a year ago. It's um, it's sort of a iPhone plugin speaker uh -huh. looking for like a low uh, a low tech version of that giant nice beautiful microphone that that nicola had um you know there's like beginner level sort of things you get into a more um more focused um sound capture yeah. rather than just your phone because i know everyone's complaining of like getting just everything on their recording when they use their phone um so let's check it out it's I think not bad plenty of versions it's not bad it's called zoom zoom yeah, IQ. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's nice. Yeah. Good work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, I also appreciate the talk. Thank you.
Nicola, and it's um, I think it's opened up a lot of interesting um, conversations and, and ideas, at least for myself. So hope to see this continue through everyone's work. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks so Thank much. You. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao, guys. Ciao, John. Ciao, ciao. Have a nice evening. Enjoy your aperitivo. You too. <laughs> <laughs> By the canal, a super cliche. I will do that. <laughs> so I know it's true. <laughs>